Hello everyone and welcome to this online training event from Pearson. And the uh, focus of today's event is for the BTEC Tech Award in Creative Media Production. Um, and we are going to be focusing today on preparing for the external assessment, which is component three, create a media product in response to a brief. Now, before we get started with today's session, I just want to make sure that everyone's in the right um, training session. Um, and just to be aware that this focuses particularly on this tech award course, which is a UK based qualification and today's training event is not appropriate for anyone delivering uh, a qualification internationally. So I just want to make sure that everyone's getting the right information. So my name is Jill Marshall Sims and I will be uh, delivering the training tonight. Um, I've worked at uh, with BTEC qualifications across both art and media for um, a long number of years, uh, to be honest. Uh, I used to work uh, predominantly in the FE sector, um, but I left teaching probably, uh, oh, probably about uh, five or six years ago, maybe longer. Um, and now I work predominantly for Pearson, um, both as a trainer, as an SV and as an examiner. Um, now, what you will notice for those of you who have accessed the chat window already is uh, our event support today, Joanna has kindly uploaded the delegate download folder uh, for you to download. Now, there are materials within that downloader folder that we're going to refer to during today's event, uh, particularly when we're looking at examples of learner work. So I would urge everyone, if you could just take a moment to download that folder, it downloads as a zip file and within there, um, you've got a whole range of, of resources that relate to uh, this particular uh, component of the Tech Award. So, as I say, if I could urge you to download that um, so that we're ready to use it for later. OK, so over the course of the next sort of two hours, this is what we're hoping to cover. We're going to take a, a sort of overview of the component itself in terms of that the content of that component and, and what we're looking to cover. We're going to look very closely at the actual assessment, including uh, the kind of vocational scenarios that you might see uh, for your learners and, and a sort of deep dive into the individual tasks learners are going to have to complete for that. We're also going to take some time to look at some examples of learner responses. Now, I think it's worth saying at this point that those examples are obviously based on work produced uh, for the Legacy Tech Award, because obviously we haven't actually had a, a component three being sat uh, for this new Tech Award or for this sort of, um, how should we say, uh, reconditioned or, or rewritten Tech Award. And so we're looking at work that was produced uh, for that Legacy qualification. And when we look at that work, we'll obviously have to look at that with an understanding of there are some slight differences between the legacy um, unit or the legacy component and the new component. But in terms of the practical work, what it will do is it will provide you with a kind of an understanding of, of where that work is and what marks that work achieved. And so hopefully you'll have that kind of qualitative uh, understanding of, of the expectations of this particular component. And then finally, we'll finish off today uh, just looking at sources of support that are available sort of after today's session, uh, what else is available to support you in um, delivering this component. Now, throughout today's session, I'd really encourage everyone to ask questions, um, to check on things if I'm not clear about something, just to, to ask for clarification, uh, because it's really important that you get out of today what you need in order to feel sort of confident and, and comfortable going forward in delivering this component, this uh, that this coming up this academic year. Uh, and, and I'm sure a lot of you are prepared, starting to prepare learners for um, this component three um, as they're kind of coming up towards obviously the latter part of their course. So before I uh, get started, are there any other initial questions that anyone would like to ask? Or is there anything kind of that people want to make sure that I'm covering in today's 
session and if you want to put that in the chat window obviously it'll just make sure i'm able to to include that information within the uh, presentation today so any initial questions or anything you'd like to check just pop that into the chat window um, and as i say make sure you download that delicate file as well Okay, so not seeing any questions at the moment, which is absolutely fine. Um, as I say, just keep them coming as they come up through the session. But for now, let's get started with uh, the content. Now, component three provides the synoptic assessment for this qualification. And the idea is you've already delivered component one, exploring media products, and component two, developing digital media production skills. And the knowledge and skills developed in those two um, components are then utilised and actually they're applied in all areas of that knowledge and understanding and skills to contribute um, to the completion of that component three, create a media product in response to a brief. So the idea is that component three will build directly on components one and two and enable learning to be brought together and it's, it's about applying that knowledge and uh, just applying those skills. Um, and the, the, the obviously the big thing um, is that now that the component one and component two are also delivered via Pearson set assignments, it's no different in terms of the external assessment. It is a paper that's going to be externally set. Um, the only real difference is in this case, um, that component three is also externally marked. Um, so it's not a requirement for you to mark the work at all. Uh, what will happen is at the end of component three, you will then upload all of that work to learn a work transfer, and that will be marked by a team of examiners, not by yourselves. So let's go on and look at exactly what component three requires from learners. So learners are required to respond to a client brief and create a product in one of the following media sectors so it's either audio moving image print or interactive now we already know for component one uh, certainly for the first part of component one learners will have had to look at all three sectors but from that point on and certainly through um, the remainder of component one and into component two uh, we expect learners have had a much more focused programme and are likely to be um, sort of sitting in one or other of those three areas in terms of the skills they've developed on the course and the kind of products they've been uh, used to making. Now, we would very much encourage learners to kind of continue uh, to apply the skills that they've already developed. Uh, you know, this external assessment isn't really that opportunity for learners to try something completely new. Um, this is about them taking what they know and, as I say, this kind of showing off what they can do um, and showing off their skill set. So if they've been doing uh, print, sort of print based media all the way through the course, then that's really where they should focus when it comes to component three. Now, learners are expected to interpret the client's needs and engage in the process of ideas generation, selecting and refining ideas. Um, Charlie just spotted your question. Yes, you will be sent a recording of the training afterwards. Uh, the, all, all training is recording. You will be sent a link to be able to access that after the event. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, they need to interpret the client's needs and engage in that process of initially it, sort of coming up with ideas and selecting and refining those ideas as they go along. They'll undertake pre-production and planning and monitoring work at the front end, and they'll actually produce a final media outcome in response to that client brief. So in many respects, this is a creative project like so many others um, that learners are, are being given a brief, they're responding to that brief to produce a, a media product. And that knowledge that they've developed in component one should inform their practical work. And certainly the skills they've developed in component two should be drawn through to actually 
again, help them produce this uh, media product. Now, if we look at the assessment objectives um, that are associated with that component three, we can see there's four assessment objectives um, in play here. So we've got understand how to develop ideas in response to a brief. So that's all about that idea generation process. And I've got that CPD. Uh, they should also uh, uh, develop planning materials in response to a brief. And we're going to look at what planning materials learners are expected to produce. And they're very explicit in terms of what those planning materials need to be, depending on what outcome learners are looking to produce. They'll apply the media production skills and techniques to the creation of a media product. So that's that making that final piece. Um, and they'll create and refine that media product to meet the requirements of the brief. And that's quite important in terms of we are talking about meeting the requirements of the brief. There'll be very clear um, requirements or parameters that learners are working in. And ultimately, they're going to be or, or part of that judgment, certainly, is all going to be about not, ne not necessarily always about um, how good the media product is, although that will form part of that judgment, but how well that relates to the brief. Have they responded to that brief or, or are they, have they just made something that they're interested in um, that may bear no relationship to what they've been asked to do? So it's that th thought process that gets learners to keep coming back to the brief. How are you answering that creative problem? How are you responding to that brief? How are you meeting the target audience? Um, how are you giving across those key messages? They're the things that learners need to really hold on to throughout component three. And I think this relates very much to the vocational nature of the qualification, because if learners then go on to work within the media industry, then ultimately they're going to have clients, they're going to have people that are, are expecting them to respond uh, to meet the needs of, of what they've asked for. Um, and that's that's the expectation. Because the, the reality is that in many ways, media is a service industry. And, and the idea is media practitioners service their clients and service their, their, those, uh, their clients' needs. Any questions so far over anything we've covered in terms of the assessment objectives? No. OK, so let's have a look at what the essential content and is for this unit. And you'll notice here you'll start to see those parallels that, that relate directly back to, as I say, components one and two. So if we look at the essential content. Split into um, a number of, of sort of different areas, so the first area is understanding how to develop ideas in response to a brief. So it's about being able to respond to a brief would be the first area to cover and how they generate ideas. Now, this is all obviously covered in the in the specification for the qualification, and it starts on page, I think, 31. So the content pages sort of go from page 31 to 34. So there's not a huge amount of content to cover for this particular component. Because as I say, because of its synoptic nature, it draws on that um, teaching and learning you've already done. Um, so we've got responding to a brief and generating ideas. When it comes to uh, develop planning material in response to brief, uh, we're talking about actual planning material that will be relevant to uh, the type of outcome learners are expecting to make. And we know that planning material for a, a sort of video or audio product is going to look very different from planning material if, if learners are making a print based product or a games based product. Um, and then finally, it's managing that production process. How do they manage that process in order to produce that media product? And again, that will depend very much on what kind of product they're planning to produce. And then in terms of uh, sort of areas C, uh, we've got this apply media production skills techniques in the creation of a media product. Now, 
The C1 is monitor and review outcomes of the production process. So that's that ongoing monitoring process learners need to do throughout their kind of practical activity. It's applying those production skills and techniques, combining and refining content. So looking at um, both found assets and uh, assets that they produce themselves and looking how they bring those to those elements together and bring assets together into the production of a final piece. It's the idea of testing and exporting those outcomes for distribution. Uh, and obviously, um, you know, certainly testing in terms of uh, does a video play, does an interactive product actually work in terms of being able to navigate uh, between different pages or different screens or, or for that product. Um, so all of that testing comes into play there. Um, and when we're talking about exporting for distribution, um, I think what we what we really need to focus on is exporting that into such a, a format that it's accessible for it to be to be marked. So whilst we talk about exporting for distribution, because that is the vocational kind of relevance of that exporting process, uh, what we mean is, are we able to actually, or is the learner able to export that into an appropriate format that it can be viewed? And then finally, and this is quite a new bit of content that wasn't in the uh, Legacy Tech Award, and I'm sure some of you here um, did teach the, the Legacy Tech Award and are looking at that, that, that transition across to this uh, new redeveloped Tech Award, is this idea of technical records. And this has become a new feature for this external component um, where learners are required to produce a technical record of, of what they do. And we're gonna look at that in a bit more depth later. Um, unfortunately today, it's worth mentioning that whilst we have got examples of learner work to look at uh, for today, we obviously don't have any examples that include this new element, this technical record. Um, simply because, as I say, it, it, we are stuck in that sort of chicken and egg uh, situation. We can't have examples of learner work until learners have actually sat the assessment. Um, and so uh, until that actually happens, uh, we're not going to be able to provide examples for centres of, of what those technical records are going to look like. Um, so what we're going to see is obviously in future years, um, you will have much more sort of there will be sort of genuine examples of learner work that has been produced for that. But at this stage, we just don't have that available. But as I say, we do have examples of learner work to look at today based on the tech award, uh, the previous tech award. Uh, Simon, it's a good question. Couldn't some be mocked up to give us a rough idea? Um, unfortunately, uh, I think there's always a risk, unfortunately, when we when we try and mock something up. And, and obviously what you have then is often a very experienced subject expert who's trying to um, produce something in the guise of, of someone who's sort of, what, 15, 16 um, and try and produce something. And it inevitably it ends up often feeling quite contrived. Um, and so I know, you know, Years ago, there used to be attempts to mock things up. And I think uh, these days, I think there's general feeling that that we try and shy away from this mocking work up um, simply for that reason, because it, it just felt a bit fake, to be honest, in the past. I think there's always been a risk. Um, and in terms of giving us some example of performers, um, again, the risk of, of performers and, I, uh, you know, you can argue this. I'm, I'm all I'm, you know, please don't shoot the messenger. All I'm going to say is that I know there's a large debate around whether to provide performers to people. And I think the risk is it becomes quite limiting because what that does is it says uh, everything has to be sort of produced in this one format. And that may not actually be appropriate or the best way for all learners to provide that evidence. And so what we want to do is leave that open for learners to. Uh, demonstrate that that knowledge or those skills or you know that process in a format that's appropriate to the work they're doing 
So I, I like I say, I totally take on board that this is an area that people are concerned about in terms of they haven't seen an example and they haven't got a performer. Um, but I think that's been some of the concerns. Um, will there be further information on what the technical re record should contain? All I can say is go back to um, the kind of the guidance in the paper, which we'll look at today, and also in the specification, and that will give you as much as, as anyone knows in terms of that technical record. Um, so, as I say, you know, all I can say is, unfortunately, there isn't though, there aren't those resources. I certainly feed that back if if that's what people are looking for. And I can deliver that back to the team in terms of you having your voice heard amongst that development team. Um, but yeah, that at the moment, as I say, all I can say is I know there isn't anything at this point. Now, Ben, you said, is there likely to be any leniency on grade boundaries on the basis that students in this year won't have as much direction as future years? Um, I think the simple answer is yes. It's very likely um, that we're going to be much more. I think lenient is probably the wrong word, but I think there's an understanding that perhaps there hasn't been the same amount of, you know, there aren't exemplars out there. There's not something to look at. This is a new feature. It's it, or to all intents and purposes a new exam, and that will be taken into account uh, when looking at grade boundaries. Um, that's all I can say. And I think largely what we what the team will be looking at is is looking at really good examples of those technical records to put out there as exemplars for the future, so that um, centres will have that obviously for future years. But yes, Ben, I, I I can I can sort of confidently say that that will be taken into account when looking at grade boundaries for this year. The fact that this is seen because of the differences will be seen as a new assessment, and therefore that um, understanding needs to be applied. So we look at that work through that lens of understanding that this is the first year. Um, so rest assured with that. Uh, I suppose that's one thing to to feel comfortable about. OK, so let's go on now and let's have a look at what that assessment structure is going to look like. So the set of tasks should be completed during that 12 week assessment period timetabled by Pearson. Now, before today's event, because I, I thought it's bound to come up as a question, I'm just going to check the dates. Uh, and that paper is due to be released on the 15th of January. I checked this um, timetable just before I logged in this evening uh, or this afternoon. So um, that 12 week assessment period will start on the 15th of January. Um, and during that 12 uh, week assessment period, that needs to be split up into sort of a number of activities. So the first one is you've got this independent research period. Learners will have been given the assignment brief or, or given the paper, and they've got a period to go off and do some research based on the paper. So they'll, they'll be potentially uh, researching the client, the theme, the different types of products that they might do. They might look at similar examples of products. A um, whole range of things that they can do to kind of start getting their kind of creative juices flowing, start looking for sources of inspiration. Then they go into activity one and that's activity one has now got two parts. It's got a part A and a part B. Um, now, if we're looking at differences between the old tech award, uh, part A and part B used to be two separate activities. They've now been joined together to form two parts of a single activity. But in, in all other respects, they're exactly the same as, as in previous years. Learners are then given a preparatory period where they're, where, where they're prepping their materials that they need and they're prepping all of their um, sort of assets that they're gonna need. And then they go into activity two, which is that production of that final piece. Um, and so you just need to timetable those activities across that 12 week period. And as I say, starting in mid January, and I think the the final, the window closes, and, and this is me from memory, it closes on the 8th of May, 
and I think all work then needs to be uploaded uh, to Learner Work Transfer by, I believe it's the 10th of May, if I remember those dates correctly. So between mid-January and sort of the beginning of May, that's where you're going to timetable all those activities to happen. And realistically, they need to happen in that order, um, you know, and you need to sort of plan that time effectively. Now, if we look at the set brief, obviously we can't look at the brief that's actually going to be issued next year because that won't come out until uh, that sort of mid-January. However, every paper, no matter what year it comes out, is always going to include the following. It'll give learners a theme, a client, a target audience, so who the uh, sort of product is, is aimed at, a list of requirements for that uh, sort of for the uh, media product they're producing and then design parameters for that media product. So they have very clear parameters uh, to design within. And based on that information, learners are required to undertake that independent research. And as I say, they can uh, research any one or all of those things in order to, to um sort of develop their understanding and also to inform their practical work. And again, that's quite an important point to remember is that that research that they undertake isn't about, OK, I've done my research, I'm going to park that now, I'm not going to worry about it and I'm going to move on. This is about actually I've done my research and now I'm going to use that information to inform what I'm going to do. And we want to see those parallels where learners are actually applying that research to their practical skills. OK, so the next thing to, to look at is what those design parameters for each of those media products are. And this will very much depend on what sector they're going to work in. So if they're working in uh, the audio or moving image sector, uh, their their product should uh, be a total of 60 to 90 seconds long. So we're not talking a huge sort of production here. Uh, it should include original recordings um, for an audio product or original footage for media products. So it must have some original recordings or footage in there. It should make appropriate use of sound and or sound effects and use appropriate editing techniques. So that's very much that's the requirements or the parameters that they need to meet. And they're really they're not going to change year on year. That's always going to be the expectation in order to ensure parity between papers. That's always going to be the expectation. If they're producing work in the print sector, they're going to be asked to create three or four pages or adverts. So that might include, for example, two double page spreads or it might be a front cover, a single page and a double page spread um, in terms of that. So it's sort of three or four um, uh, sort of pages or adverts as it is. Um, it should include original images and graphics. Now they may be images as in photographic images, they can be drawn images, uh, you know, it's completely up to the learner, but they need to be some original imagery that's been created. Learners will need to make appropriate use of page layout and design techniques. So and show their understanding of those through things like um, sort of planning documentation and how they're going to put that together. And it should include some written content appropriate to the brief. Um, now, that written content ideally uh, will be uh, generated by the learner. Um, and so they should generate their own copy for their sort of, if it's a magazine, for example, or if it's an advert, they should generate their own written copy for that. And then finally, if they're working in the interactive se sector, and this may be about a game or web design, um, Again, it's two to three pages, screens and or levels. 
So apply that that sort of number of two to three to whatever type of interactive product they're producing. It should include original assets. It must use appropriate interactive features and it must include appropriate navigation between pages, screens or levels. Now, it's worth me mentioning here because, again, this question comes up quite regularly uh, when we're talking about this. Um, it, it's been very clear from the examiner team um, that they don't consider a PowerPoint in its own right as an interactive product. So although PowerPoint might be used to uh, present evidence and, and, and perhaps record information in it, it is not seen in itself as an interactive product. Um, so if you are producing interactive uh, products as part of this course, as I say, it needs to be a, a proper interactive product, such as, as I say, a website, a game, um, an app, something like that. It cannot be PowerPoint itself as an interactive product. Um, so like I say, it's just worth noting that. Uh, just for clarity, what is the weight of the exam unit in terms of the overall percentage of the course? Um, the spec states that you have, that they have to have their own material. What if they don't and only use secondary image? Right, good question, Gerard. So in terms of the first question there, um, is what the weighting of it. Uh, so it is worth 40% of the overall qualification. So you've got the two internal components, component one and component two are worth 30% each. And then component three is the last 40% to make up the entire qualification. So that's question one. Um, and as you say, in terms of uh the uh in terms of the uh second part there, you've said. What if it, it states that they need to have their own material? What if they don't and only use secondary images? Then that will be reflected in the marking. OK, and, and, and that will be affect that will affect the mark that they receive. And when we look at the mark grids a bit later, we'll see how how where about that sort of is going to affect um, that use of secondary resources. Um, and we've got another question. Please can you clarify appropriate interactive features? Um, so appropriate interactive features will uh, be some approach where um, you can interact with that product. So maybe moving uh, a character on a screen in terms of kind of a game's design. It might be about uh, clicking on different buttons within a website to move things about. So it's that approach where someone can interact with a product. Um, it's those kind of features within it. So if we take websites as an example, as I say, there'll be boxes uh, to, to click uh, between different pages. There may be hyperlinks within there. There's all sorts that can be added as interactive features on a website. Um, and it's those features that that would be considered appropriate. And as I say, I re realise that if you think about PowerPoint, yes, you can click between slides, but PowerPoint itself is not seen as, as a as a media product in its own right. Does that help, Nazreen? Does that make it clear? Yes, it does. Thank you. I had that in mind, but I just wanted to clarify. OK, perfect. Perfect. OK, so now let's look a bit more depth. At, uh, so we've looked, we've talked about the research period. Step one, we've looked at design parameters. Now let's look at what active those activities look like um, in terms of the paper. So this is the kind of written outcome or the written part of the paper. Um, and the written outcomes for activity one must be completed under supervised conditions with a maximum duration of five hours. So this is one of those bits that you need to schedule in within that sort of 12 week period. So the learners have, have had an opportunity to do their independent research. We're now at the point where they're gonna complete activity one and you need to schedule a five hour period for learners to be able to do that. 
And when we're talking about supervised conditions, we are effectively talking about exam conditions. Um, so work, learners working independently, there's no talking, there's no uh, sort of anything like that. There's no getting up, there's no walking around. Um, and those supervised time can be more than one session and must be completed, as we say, between that during that 12 week assessment period. Now, the materials or the outcomes that learners generate during that um, sort of supervised conditions, they must be retained by you in terms of you as the teacher or the tutor in order for them to be sent off to, to Pearson for assessment. So they will form part of the actual uh, final assessment material. However, because they're going to inform what learners do and because learners are actually generating sort of planning material as part of that, um, copies of those documents can be given back to the learners for them to use as they go into activity two um, and the, the, their kind of preparatory period. So you can give them copies of those materials, but you, the originals need to be uh, retained by you in preparation to send off to Pearson for marking. So as I say, activity one has now been split into two parts. The first part is part A, and this is the ideas log. So based on that paper they've been given, based on their initial research and that independent research they've done, learners complete this ideas log on the development of their chosen idea. Now that log should provide information on their initial ideas and how they will, ideas will meet the brief with reference to how they're going to target the audience they're expected to target, how any other media products have influenced them. So again, referencing back to their research, what the content of their chosen idea and how it will be structured into a narrative running order, pages or screen. So thinking about content, what's that final piece going to look like? Um, how the content meets the requirements of the brief. So as I said, the brief will have specific requirements in it and the style that they will use that will be used in their chosen idea. So thinking about stylistic choices they might uh, have made in terms of what that's going to look like. So this is very much them sort of setting out their stall. This is what I'm going to make. I've read the brief. I've done my research. This is now what I want to make. So Fiona, you've said in the spec says that students can have notes and access to the Internet. So it's is it similar to component two? When do we? Um, need to scan activity one planning after activity one or at the end of activity one. So you need to scan the document at the end of this. Um, in terms of the what their outcome for activity one, you need to scan that at the end of the supervised session for activity one. As I say, they will still have a copy of their document, but you need to retain the original so that actually you have it ready to be sent off because at the end of that they can't change what they've done in that supervised time um they can't add to that or adjust it or amend it they we we're going to mark what they've done in that five hour period okay now the other thing they're going to produce in the they can still type the ideas log yet. There's no restrictions on whether that's handwritten or typed. Obviously, as with all things, if learners are producing handwritten work uh, for that um, ideas log, uh, just obviously make sure it's legible. Um, you know, examiners are, are pretty good at, at being able to decipher text and, and read learners' uh, writing. But um, as always, we know some some learners are, are perhaps more legible than others so uh, think about that in terms of learners and you know certainly from from an examiner's point of view if I, if I was talking about it from myself my point of view as an examiner I'd say typed is always easier because it's just easier to read generally okay so the other thing that they need to produce in that five hours is their planning material Um, and students can have access to the notes um, during that. Absolutely. It's not a kind of closed book 
thing. It's not about them remembering facts or anything. They, they are able to access those documents in producing that work. So the planning material, um, when they, uh, in that sort of, uh, sort of supervised period, again, will depend on what they are actually producing. Um, so again, it relates back to whether they're working in audio booming image, print or interactive. Um, and so if they're, if it's audio moving image, they can produce either a script or a storyboard. Now, again, play to your learner's strengths. If their strength is around storyboarding, then that's absolutely fine. They can go out and they can they can actually draw the storyboard. And remember, they're not being marked on their drawing ability necessarily, but it does need to be clear what's happening in terms of that storyboard and it does need to be appropriately labelled and so on so we can understand what what they're planning to produce. Again, if they're, if they're drawing on and those storyboarding isn't their strength, then get them to write a script and that's as appropriate, uh, whether it's a video or an audio piece. Um, and and it's it's obviously got to be detailed enough to identify what it is they're going to produce and, and what they're going to use uh, to make their final product. And I would just say that these uh, planning documents do need to correlate with what the learners actually do at the end. We realise that when it comes to uh, sort of the production process, things might deviate slightly uh, from the pre-production process. That's just natural. Um, but it shouldn't be something completely different. So it does need to be very much focused. The ideas log says what the idea is. The planning materials will start to say what they're planning to do. Um, uh, what they're going to do. And um, as I say, the planning materials should then flow through into the final product. Uh, what we're going to do, I'll tell you what we'll, we'll do. I know there's lots of questions around this access um, and this control period. So I'll tell you what, what we're going to do now, I'm just going to pause. Let's bring up one of those, um, the uh, materials so we can just, oh, let me just bring up the document, the sample marked or sample assessment materials and have a look at exactly what that says, because that'll clarify. And I just want to obviously make sure the wording is absolutely accurate, because um, the last thing I want to do is is mislead anyone. So let's double just check what that says. Um, so I'm going to come back in. And I'm going to share my screen again. One second. OK, so hopefully you can see my screen now. Um, and what you should see is we've got the uh, sample assessment material. And I'm just going to scroll down and look at exactly what that says about supervised conditions during that period. Because that'll tell us exactly uh, what that should happen. Okay, let's just have a quick. Uh, so it says, the written outcomes for activity one must be completed under supervised conditions with a maximum duration of five hours. The supervised time can be in more than one session and must be completed during the 12 week assessment period specified by Pearson. Outcomes for activity one must be retained by the teacher. Um, that's fine. Following the completion of activity one, learners will need to use the preparatory period to collect the thing. All outcome for physician must be produced individually. Uh, let's just look, say so task formal. So here we go. Uh, learners are not allowed to take any notes into the supervised environment. So just to clarify here, 
um, because it seems there's been uh, sort of some chat around this. Let's have a look. So you're not allowed to take any notes into the supervised environment. Uh, learners are permitted to access pre-production templates for part B of activity one only. So when we're talking about pre-production templates, we're talking about things like uh, a storyboard template or maybe a, a script template, if they want to do to use that. Only permitted material for the set task can be brought into the supervised environment. And during any permitted break and at the end of the supervised session, materials must be kept securely and no items removed from the supervised environments. Outcomes for Activity 1, Part A and Part B must be held securely and made available to learners during the preparatory period and Activity 2. So just to be really clear there, because obviously this is a question that's come up, it says very, it states very clearly within there that learners are not allowed to take notes in um, to that preparatory period. Um, so they cannot have access to notes. And because it's supervised assessment, they will not be able to have access to the internet either. So they can have access to the internet for research during the research period, um, but not during uh, the actual supervised period. Um, does that clarify that for everyone? Like I say, it's worth just being really clear on that point. Any other questions around the, that uh, period of sort of supervised assessment? Okay, so as we've already said, um, for this planning materials, they can have templates, so they can make use of, of templates uh, for things like storyboards. If they're producing, So page four, so, right, in the past, we've been allowed to isolate sites that learners can use in the practical bit. Um, okay, so let's clarify this, because this, this is potentially going to be a, a, a source of contention, and I'd rather kind of get this clarified. So, as Reen, you said, what if they use an online software to create their interactive product? Um, yes. And Simon's raised that point well, they can, you can isolate sites that students can use if they're using it to create an interactive product. Um, so if a piece of software relies on being connected to the internet in order for it to function, then that is permittable. They're not allowed to sort of access things like search engines and look up um, pre-made uh, materials. They, they are not able to access kind of the web, if you like, what they can do is the software can access the web to, to run what it needs to, but they're not able to search anything or, or find other resourcing. OK, so um, talk to your IT department about that because they'll be able to help with that um, setting up the student systems for that reason. But as I say, um, you can't they can't have access to the Internet during that. Um, Fiona, I'm quite happy to, uh, we can pick up on, on the fact that you're saying this contradicts on page 46. Um, without the spec in front of me, I, I, I don't know what page 46 of the spec actually says. Um, I'm quite happy to look at that with you at the end of the session um, if you feel that it, it contradicts. But as I say, um, during those supervised periods, learners aren't going to be able to access the internet and they're not going to be able to take notes. There are other times during this assessment when they will be able to, but just not during those supervised periods. Um, does that make any other questions? Does that make any sense then? Has that helped at all? And as I say, Fiona, I'm quite happy to pick that up with you um, at the end of the session if, if you need if you need me to. OK, um, so as I say, in terms of planning materials, like let's let's get back on that. So we've got audio, moving image, it's a script or a storyboard, 
print, we're talking about layouts and designs for the pages of the print um, product. Uh, so things like thumbnail sketches, uh, page layouts, uh, colorways, all of that sort of stuff might be included within that, that kind of planning material for there. Um, and similarly for interactive, you are talking about layouts and designs for the pages, screens or levels of that interactive media product. So a planning document to show what they're planning to produce. And as I was saying earlier, that needs to directly relate back to or relate um, going forward to what it is they finally produce. So that's all produced in five hours. Like I say, we're not talking huge amounts of time and learners will need to plan their time very carefully to be able to make sure that they achieve both of those, the ideas log and the planning material. Once they've completed that five hour supervised assessment material, like I say, you've kept their, their what they've produced for that ready to be sent off. They've got a copy. So they've got their ideas log, they've got their planning material, they're ready to go. And this is when they go through this preparatory period. Now, during this preparatory period, uh, learners will have access to the Internet. This is under supervised, under low control conditions. So as we say, access to the Internet, they've got all their notes, they've got everything they need. Um, and it's during this preparatory period that learners are going to create their original assets or materials. So whether that's original recordings, original uh, video footage, it might be starting to kind of develop assets that they're going to apply in terms of maybe character designs or, you know, photography or drawings or whatever it is they're going to include. Um, so they're going to sort of create their assets. They're going to prepare those original assets and also they're going to gather assets from secondary sources. Um, and we do expect learners that within the, any media product to be a, a mix of both found assets and original assets that have been brought together and, and kind of combined to produce this end product. Now that preparatory period obviously sits within that 12 week assessment period and it has to happen prior to activity two because this is where they're gathering and preparing everything they've got uh, ready to uh, use for activity two. Um, now, the work obviously needs to be produced individually. This is a, a, an external assessment. However, in some um, in some cases, certainly for things like uh, video production, uh, learners may well need to work together or enlist the help of others uh, to create material. So if they if they need someone to act as an actor or an interviewee or a model, there, there's the possibility that they're going to use someone. Um, to help them produce their, that create those assets. Uh, so examples of print found sources, it might be that they they look at some um, sort of found photography, found photographs or found images that they will combine with their own images. It might well be that they're, they're sourcing in terms of assets, they might be forcing diff uh, sourcing different um, typography that they want to include. Um, there's a whole range of things that they might produce. They might want to um, find some different types of um, pattern or background that they could add in as, as on, on their uh, sort of print sort of documents. So thinking about different uh, colorways or, or prints or, or sort of surface texture type um, things that they want to add in that will add to their their print their print piece, should I say. Um, so that's the kind of things they might want to find. They might want to, if they're producing um, some original text on something, they might want to look at quotes that they could put in as part of that. Uh, in terms of interactive game found sources, again, it may be uh, sort of, yeah, components that be could could be included into um the environment the game environment it could be sort of found um assets that that can be included as part of of a level um you know simple mechanisms things like you know ladders or trees or um in terms of 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 those kind of 
interactive games it could be all a whole range of things it might even be sort of uh non-playable characters that they add in as part of the game there's a whole range of things in terms of copy being an asset um the the expectation really is that learners should be writing their own copy they can certainly source information as part of that um but in the same way we would expect learners to be kind of uh, developing that as, a, as an asset for their work. Um, and yeah, in terms of can students, can people write their copy in this period and bring it into the task too? Absolutely, that would be an asset. Um, so in, in exactly the same way they're going to create that asset, so they're going to write it during that time, they're also going to prepare um, that asset in terms of uh, getting it sort of proofreading it correcting it thinking about how they're going to do it they might even sort of change the font um, change the formats of that so that it's ready to combine um, we're not expecting them to go into activity two and start that writing process there so that's that is certainly an asset that they should be creating Okay, so we've now got to the end of the preparatory period. So they've done their initial idea, they've done their research, they've done their initial ideas in their ideas log, they've created some planning materials and now they've gathered all of this stuff that they're going to use. So they've gathered all their bits that they're going to put together in terms of that final outcome. And that's when we go into activity two, when they're going to create their final media product. Now, again, learners have five hours um, to create their media product or products and their technical review record. So activity two is conducted again under supervised conditions. So again, we're talking about um, they won't have access to the Internet. So any assets they need, anything they need to produce that final piece, they must have prepared during the preparatory period and have ready to go. So they can't suddenly decide in the middle of that five hours, oh, actually, I need this image or I need this photograph and I haven't got it. I'll just pop online and pick one. They won't have access to do that. So during that supervised conditions, as I say, they've only got the stuff that they prepared during that preparatory period. And what they need to do is to then use the ideas from activity one and the material and footage or assets that they've created and generated to create their media product in response to the brief. They also then during that same five hour period need to export or publish their product in an appropriate digital file format. And I think it's worth mentioning at this point, if you are using specialist uh, software um, in order to, to allow learners to create things, um, that exporting um, that product in, means it needs to come out in a way that is accessible for um, examiners to be able to view it. They will not have access to specialist software. So think about if you're looking at, at print products, you're thinking about, right, exporting that as a PDF. Um, videos should be in, in sort of file formats such as uh, MP4. Um, and so that they have their easily accessible file formats for anyone to view. Uh, and again, in terms of games, think about making that into, and again, my knowledge of kind of game formats is probably slightly rustier than some of the other, than uh, the other sectors, but just think about formats that anyone can use without specialist software. Uh, and make sure, um, again, that they're actually testing that and making sure it works and that things can actually, that an examiner can actually see the quality of their work by being able to actually interact with that product. Um, and as we say, and, and again, I know this is a point of concern for people, but learners are going to be expected to produce a technical and review record. Now, it's not a huge undertaking in terms of written. We're talking two sides of A4 that outline how they've used software and equipment. Um, to create key aspects of the product. So how they've actually utilized the software and equipment that they've had and documents the outcome of key review points in the production process. 
So thinking about how they made their creative decisions, how they reviewed what was going well and what wasn't going so well. Um, and Charlie, just to reiterate in terms of what we discussed earlier, unfortunately, we don't have any examples of these technical review records. This is a new feature uh, for this component and therefore we just don't have examples available. It's absolutely similar to review and, re uh, review and refine in C2. It's just that we're now asking learners to document that as part of the exam. And I think um, going but looking back at the Legacy Tech Award, obviously this was something that was often missing is, is perhaps it wasn't always clear how learners have used software. Because actually, if it's software that um, the examiner is unfamiliar with, then unless we get the learner to explain how they've used that software and equipment to create the aspects of their work, it may well be that that can get lost in translation. Uh, it does need to be a written uh, technical review. My understanding, you know, they can obviously add imagery to that as, as part of that technical review. That would be acceptable. Um, but I don't think it will be appropriate for it to be 100% screenshots. There would need to be annotation within that. So they would need to, to sort of discuss what they're doing. Um, certainly screenshots and explaining issues, how they came over um, and, and what they did while they did the practical. It does make sense because what we don't want is something that's um, spending hours trying to describe something when an image could do and then they could just explain it. So um, I think that that whole idea of, of including screenshots is a great idea um, because, as I say, it allows them to move away from the purely descriptive into the explanation. Um, and they've only got two sides of A4 to do this and and, and they've only got five hours uh, to create all this. So we don't want to spend hours trying to describe something. Um, so would this be a review of the whole product creation or individual assets or both? I think both, to be honest, Charlie. I think when you're looking at that technical review, think about when they're thinking about how they've used software and equipment, that's going to be both in the creation of assets during that preparatory period, but also how they have brought those assets together as in the final product. And, and those key review points in the production process, remember that production process would have started uh, from the point when they're creating assets during that preparatory period. So although that review technical review record is being created uh, as part of activity two, I think it does reflect back over everything they've done during that preparatory period as well. Now, Michelle, I'm, I'm aware you've got your hand up if you'd like to open the mic. Michelle, do you still have a question or have I answered the question? Okay. Um, do we include before or after or will the after suffice? Uh, you're going to have to explain that, that one, that question a bit more, Charlie. Uh, do we include before and after or after or will the after suffice? So like a comparison, comparison of an image pre-edited and then after it, then edited. I, it doesn't necessarily need to be that uh, that kind of precise in terms of providing this was the before image, this was the after image. I think if they, they are doing something that they can kind of, for example, I think if they put an image up there, there's their sort of final image and they say, well, you know, I use Photoshop to do X, Y and Z we'll be able to see the the effect of that. So I think the the actual final thing, if, if you like, the after thing would be absolutely appropriate. They don't have to have the before and after. Um, as I say, we're only looking at two sides of A4 and it's only talk, getting them to talk about how they've used the software and equipment. They don't have to demonstrate the, the results of that because that should come through in terms of the final piece anyway. OK, any other questions before we move on and look at the assessment? OK, so the good news about component three is that you don't have to mark it. 
you send it off and it's going to be marked by a team of examiners. Um, but what you do have is you do have access to the um, assessment or to the mark grids for this. So you can look exactly what learners are going to be assessed against. So there are four grids that learners are going to be assessed against and they'll get a, a, a mark for each of those assessment grids. So grid one looks all about activity one and that ideas log. That's the only thing that's marked against grid one. And they have a, a total of 15 marks they can achieve for that. Uh, grid two looks at the planning materials they've produced and they'll get a mark for that. And grid three and four both look at that final media product. But activity two looks at the technical skills they've used. And that's when that kind of uh, review document is going to come in when they're talking about the technical skills. And also, obviously, the examiner looking at that final product and the technical skills being on show in that final product. And then activity uh, grid four, sorry, also looks at the, that final product, but looks at the ideas in that product. And again, that relationship back to what they were asked to do, what the brief asked from them. And activity, uh, sorry, uh, grid number three is a mark out of 12. And grid number four, in terms of that idea, is a mark out of 18. So overall, learners will achieve uh, an overall mark out of 60 for the paper. Um, that will then get converted into um, a mark to, to sort of go towards the learner's final qualification grade. So that mark out of 60 will then get converted both uh, to a USM, a uniform standard mark, but also will can get converted into a grade for that particular component. And as we know, with individual component grades, learners can get either a level one pass merit or distinction or a level two pass merit and distinction. So they will get a grade for the component as well as that um, going towards the final uh, qualification grade. So we've said, can you please explain the grid four ideas again? Let, I tell you what, let's, let's look at grid four. Let's look at exactly what that grid looks like. So again, I'm just gonna come out the presentation for a minute and we'll bring up grid four. And as you say, you've got a copy of this um, within your delegate pack for today, but we'll just look at it on the screen at the moment. I'm going to scroll through. This was all that set brief that we were just looking at a minute ago. Uh, scroll right the way down. And here we go. We're, we're into the marking grid and I'm just going to turn that around so it's clear. So as I say, Activity one, ideas, log, activity one, uh, the planning material, well, that's the first two grids. But the grid we want to particularly look at is the final grid that looks at ideas. And I'm going to zoom into that just so that it's a bit clearer for us all to look at. So let's be really positive. Let's look at the top end in terms of that uh, band four. So it says content is thoroughly developed and entirely suitable in relation to the brief. So again, that relationship back to the brief. Is that is that idea developed? You know, is, is it a very basic idea or has it moved forward and has it been developed and refined? And does it meet the requirements of the brief? Accomplish use of codes and conventions of the chosen sector to effectively shape outcomes. So again, this is where they're going to start applying their knowledge that they've developed in component one and sort of honed in component two to start using the codes and conventions relevant uh, for the sector they're working in. Outcomes show an effective interpretation of the brief. So again, that relationship back to the brief and ideas are effectively communicated to the audience. So we're not necessarily at this point, obviously looking at the technical aspects of, of the product we're actually looking about what the idea is for that product, what it is learners are trying to communicate. And that differs very much, as I say, if we look at the grid before, grid three, it talks very much about technical processes and techniques, effective proce uh, process of review used to develop and refine work and confident use of equipment. 
So there is a difference there between that kind of technical element and the ideas element. Uh, ben, good question. Would a learner be less likely to attract a band four mark if they only did three pages instead of four for the print sector? Absolutely not. Um, they they are given the option of three to four pages. Um, and if they do three pages really well, they're as likely to get a um, distinction mark as if they did four pages really well. It's always going to be a quality decision over a quantity provided they've met the requirements of the brief and three pages would meet the requirements of the brief, that it doesn't mean that they're any more likely to get a higher mark just for producing more. As I say, it's always gonna be a quality decision over quantity decision. Uh, Nazreen, in terms of that question around the grid four, does that make more sense now? Excellent. So like I say, it's just that looking at the um, difference between the ideas and the technical skills. And I think that is definitely going to target some learners more than others, where learners may have really strong ideas, but perhaps aren't so technically minded. And other learners who have really good technical skills, but actually sometimes their ideas aren't quite there. And it, this kind of helps to target that. You obviously have the learners that are all rounders and good at both. Um, but it does help just to make that distinction. Okay, let's get back into the presentation then. Now, what you will notice in that assessment grids is that you have some quite sort of key terms and command verbs that we see um, that are mirrored across the uh, four mark grids um, for different mark bands. So let me explain that in a bit more detail. So if we're looking at mark band one, the lowest mark band available, regardless of which mark grid we're looking at, then we're looking at those keywords, things like basic, limited, superficial and tentative. Anything that, that kind of has those characteristics is going to be in mark band one. And because the language then becomes progressive, if we're looking at mark band two, we've got command words such as adequate, sufficient, some, partial or partially, and we've got the word straightforward. So we're looking for, for kind of that sort of qualities within the evidence that's being marked. At mark band three, we're starting to see work that we consider competent, appropriate, most or mostly and clear or clearly so again we're starting to see sort of the quality raising that kind of progressive nature of that language across those mark grids or mark bands sorry and then for that top mark band if we're looking at mark band four then what we want to see is the qualities of confident or confidence effective thorough and in-depth and Ben, this goes back to your questions about four pages or three pages. It doesn't feature, provided they've met the requirement, and as we say, three pages would meet that requirement. If those three pages are showing evidence of confidence, being effective, being thorough and being in depth, then they're going to achieve those mark band, uh, achieve in mark band four. Uh, and, and that will ultimately uh, lead to those kind of higher marks overall. OK, so what we're going to do now is I want us to look at some examples of learner work. So um, as I say, I've got some images, some initial images of the learner work on, on the screen for us to look at. But you've got the entire portfolio of learner work in the pack that you've downloaded, hopefully. Um, and I'm just going to ask uh, Joanna, who's supporting today's event, if you could just put that link in again, just in case anyone hasn't got it um, in the chat window. We've got the uh, resources for today's session, which includes this learner work for, for people to have a look at. So, as I say, we're looking at the learner work. Um, and, and just to clarify again, 
this is from the Legacy Tech Award. And so in terms of the learner work we're going to look at now, the ideas log was activity one and the planning material were activity two. Um, as we know, in the new tech award, in this new component, they've been combined into part A and part B of activity one, but they were separate activities for the uh, legacy tech award. And, and the final product was activity three in that legacy tech award. Um, and also learners were not required to produce the technical review. Um, and that's an additional element that's been added to the assessment of learners and given and learners have been given like an additional hour to complete this activity. Uh, sorry, uh, that pack link hasn't come through at the minute. One minute, let me see if I can't uh, click to uh, get that. It should come further. Um, let me just see if we can't get that uh, pack that uploaded. Joanna, are you able to upload the pack link again, please? Um, into that chat window, which it may well be. It is up at the top. It's just obviously if you've down if you've joined the the sort of uh, meeting a bit later, then you might not be able to see that. Um, but yeah, hopefully. Uh, Joanna will be uploading that. It might be that it's just loading up at the moment. It's quite a large file. Yeah. So Joanna's sending it now. Um, like I say, it'll take a while because of the, the size of the file to just upload. OK. So if when we're looking at this work, just to provide context, I just want to kind of let you know what the brief was that learners were set. So the set brief for this example work was Give Back. It's a new national organisation. The aim of the organisation is to highlight volunteering opportunities and promote the benefits of volunteering to teenagers. Now, I'm sure some of you um, will have done this brief with your learners if you did do, if you were uh, delivering the te Legacy Tech Award. And Give Back has asked you to produce a media product your product should promote at least one way that 14 to 18 year olds, so there's the target audience, can gain experience and develop their own skills whilst undertaking formal or informal volunteering within their local communities. So that's what the expectation is, that's what they're being asked to do. And then in terms of requirements, it says your media product should be informative and appealing, use language that will engage the target audience, promote the benefits of volunteering and demonstrate a wide range of practical skills. So that is that's the brief that learners have responded to in terms of this work. So let's have a look first at learner one as an example. And as I say, I've just got sort of little screenshots of that work up on the screen um, so you can see the one we're talking about. And this learner's produced this this kind of poster, uh, this give it back poster um, for you to look at. You can obviously look at the full um, sort of submission from this learner within your pack. And what we're going to do in a minute, we're just going to have a look at what this learner received in terms of a grade. Or not a grade, sorry, in terms of a mark. Um, and I don't have the grades because I didn't look at the grade boundaries um, from this particular paper, but we'll look at it in terms of marks that they've received. And we remember grade boundaries can always change. OK. So if we look at this piece of work and we look then at what this learner achieved, you can see across the four um, mark grids, We've got, in terms of their ideas log, they received a mark of six. So that's in mark band two. And in terms of um, activity two, the, the planning material, again, they've achieved in mark band two. So this learner's sitting in mark band two for grids one and two. But when it comes to that final product, the learners drop down into mark band one. So in terms of the skills and the ideas on display in that final product, um, 
this learner dropped down into mark band one. So what we've got here is, a, is overall mark of 17 out of 60. And as I say, I don't have the information at hand to, to what grade, what mark that actually, or what final grade that actually equated to. Um, for those of you who did this, you may um, know those grade boundaries based on the examiner report. Um, unfortunately, like I say, I just don't have that information with me at the minute. Um, but this is obviously a learner that, that, that kind of struggles. I think that there are some uh, definite sort of areas that of that the skills could have been developed particularly if we look at at that kind of final product in terms of how effective that is and if we relate that back to the language we were looking at earlier we're definitely seeing things that are basic and limited in terms of this being a final poster um, that sort of celebrates volunteering and is aimed at that particular target audience Any questions with regard to the learner one then? In terms of uh, what you're seeing in the folder is the entire body of learner work. The, the stuff on the screen is obviously just kind of screenshots of it. So you'll be able to see it in more depth, but I don't think there's that much more than what I've got on the screen, to be honest, um, from memory of looking at the learner work. I don't think there was an awful lot more than, than, than what I did the screenshots of. And that was everything that was handed in. Yeah, so literally all of it. I, I did think so. I think on some of the other ones, I've I've kind of had to be a bit more selective in terms of what evidence I show because there was just too much to to show on one page. But in terms of this one, it literally fits on one slide. So, um, and I think that's why, you know, for me, there is no real shock there in terms of looking at that grade break there, that mark breakdown. For this particular learner. Any other questions about learner one then before we go on and look at learner two? No? Okay, so let's look at learner two. And I think straight away, just looking at the screen, we can see um, that this learner is kind of, is perhaps a little bit more organized, a little bit more sort of brought together in some ways um, but actually when you start to read through it the content isn't that much better at all um, there is only one page for the final product for learner one is that not a fail no it's not a fail at all it does meet the requirements to to achieve some grades um, we're probably if and I'm, I'm as a guess I think it's it's somewhere within the level one grade range at seventeen but um certainly not it's it's not a complete fail for that learner um I think the marking and justification is only shown in terms of um the slides here but what I can do um for anyone that wants a copy of the slides what I'll do is I'll um pop a copy of the um, actual presentation into the chat window at the end of the session if people want a copy of that to relate back to, if that would be helpful. So if we look at Learner 2 then and, and look at that, I mean, my initial thought, you know, when you look at it visually is that, Oh, it is in the folder. Thank you. Sorry, I wasn't. I didn't pre-check the folder, and, and this kind of, it's been a while since we delivered this session. Um, so, looking at this, my initial reaction to it is: is it seems better than Learner One, but actually, when you start to dig down, that it's lacking in a lot of areas, in terms of how well it meets the brief. So. Those initial thoughts can be quite seductive in terms of it, it's a lot neater, perhaps. But actually, when you start to break that down, this is still a learner that's floating around that um, level or mark band one, mark band two approach. So in this way, it's slightly the other way around. So certainly that ideas log is sitting in band one um, and those 
uh, sort of uh, planning materials again um, sitting around sort of band one, band two. And that's because um, realistically, although Um, let me just, as I say, bring that back up. The joy of technology. It's great when it works. Um, so let me just catch up with where I was. And I'm going to share my screen with you again and do, again, my apologies for that. Okay, hopefully I'm back with you. If you did put any questions in that uh, chat window whilst I was uh, temporary out of action, unfortunately I don't have access to that. So if you could just repeat any questions in that chat window, anything that, that kind of you asked while I was uh, disappeared for a while, then please do and, and I will come back to it. Apologies for that. So as I was saying, it was just we were just talking about this learner two work, weren't we? And, and I was just sort of saying that although perhaps looks a bit slicker than learner one, um, actually the content wise, there's not an awful lot in it. Um, and so we are definitely seeing those kind of mark band one, mark band two sort of borderline marks there uh, with a total mark um, there of, of, of 19 overall. And if we compare that to learner one, who got a total of 17, um, the, although the breakdown is very different, obviously for learner one, they did better on activity one and two and not so good in terms of the final product. Um, if we look at, at learner two, they actually did best, their best work was kind of, uh, they did quite well on activity two in terms of five, um, but activity uh, three, was definitely their best in terms of an eight eight marks overall. Okay, so now what we're going to do, uh, we've got about half an hour left, like I say, so uh, we're now just going to look at learner three and four. Um, so let's look at learner three as a start point. So take a few minutes now, let's have, a, we've got a bit of time, let's have a look at Learner 3 and I'd like you to have a look at that um, materials for Learner 3 um, and let me know your thoughts in terms of how you feel this learner has responded to the brief and, and what you think about the quality of this work. So I'm just going to go quiet for a minute and just give you a chance to to kind of read through that uh, submission for learner three.
Okay, once you've had a chance to have a look at that um, sort of learner three work, um, again, I'd be really interested to know your thoughts on that. What, how well or, or how badly do you think the learner did? Do you think it's uh, good quality? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses within that submission? It'd be nice to sort of hear from you what you think about that. Yep. So certainly we're looking at a much more accomplished body of work, aren't you? And that, you know, even without reading it, you can see that quite visually in the way that the, the certainly in the way the final outcome's been produced, but also those kind of planning materials. Um, you can start to see that this learner has, has kind of taken on board the requirements of the brief in much more appropriate ways and has applied an appropriate level of um, sort of skill. So the drafts are excellent, res is very good, final design is good, but bounding boxes on cover needs more refinement and tweaks. Absolutely. I and mean, we are talking, obviously, um, you know, it is we wouldn't say this is perfect. We're not talking about top marks. There is definitely areas for improvement, but generally, I think, you know, we've got a, a high performing learner here who's produced a good body of work. Now, obviously, in terms of this, as I say, they haven't produced that um, sort of uh, skills log that they have to produce or the technical uh, report that needs to be produced for this year. Um, but we can obviously see everything else they've produced and that final outcome shows a good level of technical comp competence. Um, good use of photos and, and layers. Absolutely. This is someone who who sort of has embraced the technical nature of, of the course and and has produced a, a, a sort of an accomplished final outcome. So let's have a look at, at the grading. And Verity, you are absolutely right when you start talking about sort of band three, band four material. So the lowest level of achievement is, is in that band one in terms of the ideas log. So that sits there as a 10 overall. So it's still quite high achieving in terms of uh, mark band three. But for the rest of it, in terms of the planning material, we've already said that they're excellent planning material um, and that final outcome that's very accomplished. We're looking at band four with an overall mark of 51 out of 60. Um, and whilst, like I say, we can't really get into talking about uh, what grade that would be overall, I would be very shocked if a 51 out of 60 didn't achieve a distinction uh, for the unit. Like I say, I don't know the grade boundaries for this particular um, paper, uh, but I would be surprised if, if 51 out of 60 didn't achieve a distinction overall. So again, you know, these are our published materials. And, and it, it just helps to kind of understand that expectation in terms of, of what we expect and to see and the kind of range of, of work that as examiners we do get to see um, when, when we're looking at submissions for this particular uh, component. Okay, we've got one final uh, sort of uh, submission to look at and this is actually a video um, because I think sometimes in these training materials, um, we do perhaps focus more on print uh, simply because it's easy, easier to sort of share with everyone. But we have got a video. Um, Lisa, you've said, is spelling not taken into account on final products? Uh, I think it's spelling's one of those things, I think, that we need to be realistic about. It is not necessarily part of the criteria. However, if it is so bad that it actually affects the quality of the outcome in terms of a media product, then obviously we do need to take it into account. So there's no point saying, oh, spelling doesn't matter. We're not looking at that. Because actually, if the spelling is such is so poor that actually it affects the quality of the final piece or the final outcome, then yes, that's going to take into account. But if we, if, you know, 
if a learner in the production of this work produces work with a couple of typos, then that's not something that they're going to be necessarily penalised for. Um, so again, it, it's always going to be a balance because it's not necessarily a specific part of the criteria, but it does need to be appropriate and fit for purpose in terms of, uh, you know, it, it is forms part of that media product. So you say, I teach students it, it as part of refinement, that's all, and there are a large number of on Learner 3. Uh, it is part of refinement, and certainly I think it's something, if, say, for example, if Learner had produced this for, say, component uh, 2, as uh, part of the PSA, then it's certainly something, because of the nature of internal assessment, you're going to pick it up, you're going to feed back to that learner about it, and so on and so forth. And I agree with you, Lisa, it is part of that refinement and that proofreading process. Uh, I guess all I'm saying is that it's not necessarily a kind of something we can start deducting points from. Um, so, uh, yeah, but just to be aware that it, it, it is considered if it's kind of going to affect the final outcome, but it's not necessarily part of the criteria. Um, Claire, you've said you might miss this, but is there a technical review record section in these examples? Uh, there isn't, Claire, sorry. Um, because this is produced, this work was produced for the Legacy Tech Award, where that um, element, that technical review record wasn't part of it, we don't have any um, examples of that technical review record. So uh, just to say that that's not part of the materials today. Uh, so what would the learner need to include to uh, move the mark band uh, it, to mark band four in activity one? Um, <laughs> good question, I suppose. Uh, I think we'd have to review that um, actual, uh, their ideas log against that criteria, but it, it, it's the probably the clarity of that message. And, and again, without sort of, bringing that document up and reading it in, in depth, uh, which uh, unfortunately we just don't have time for today. Um, it's going to be, I, I would assume that it's based on the clarity of the message and the links back to how that meets the brief. And that's, for me, the big focus of that ideas log um, for activity 1A, if you like, um, is that that constant reference back is, this is what my idea is. This is why it meets the brief. This is what I'm going to do. This is what, how it's going to meet the requirements. So it's always that reflection back. Um, so I would perhaps look at it through that lens and see if there's areas where the learner hasn't quite um, hit in terms of uh, those final things, which stops it going all the way up into that sort of top mark band. And as I say, without without doing that sort of formal analysis, I, I can't give you any any kind of more clarity on that for now, unfortunately. OK, so let's Here's now. what I found. Oh, there's Siri telling me here what they found. Um, so what we're going to do now is just very quickly um, look at Learner 4 then. So again, Learner 4, we've got, uh, as I say, it's a video bit. So we've got an ideas log. Um, we've got um, the uh, an actual storyboard that the learners put together. Um, not terrible drawing skills, but probably not the best drawing skills in the world. But you can see the quality of that uh, storyboard they've put together. And then we've got a final video. And I'm just going to play the video on screen now. Uh, to give you all an example of that.
so there we go we've we've seen uh, kind of that video evidence for that learner and as i say you can look at that learner log and you've you've also got a copy of the video in your file there for you to look at um so again let's have a look now at, at what learner four achieved in terms of a grade or in terms of marks oh So again, here we've got the learner four and it's sitting hovering around sort of for the ideas log again, it's hovering around uh, sort of the bottom, the top of mark band two, the bottom of mark band three as a mark of 10. Um, we can see for activity two, um, which is the planning material, uh, the learners achieving again is kind of sitting there on the kind of cusp between uh, mark band three and mark band four. Certainly for technical skills, they've achieved a, a mark of 11. So up in that mark band four. And then for activity three, their ideas, they've got an overall mark of 16 for that, which again gives them an overall score of 50. So directly really comparable to learner three, but obviously the evidence that we're presented with is very different. So we've got uh, both of those learners achieving uh, very highly for the um, for the component, uh, but producing very different outcomes. OK, are there any other questions around that learner work? Anything else that anyone would like to kind of ask or discuss or clarify in terms of the learner work? No, if there are no questions, that's fine. Uh, what we're going to do, we've got a oh, little bit under 15 minutes left. So we're just going to go through the, the rest of today's presentation. And then, like I say, I want to leave a little bit of time at the end, um, just so that if there are any other questions um, that we can go through uh, and discuss that. Azreen, in terms of are there any examples with full marks, I don't have any access to them. I know that there were full marks uh, issued to some learners, so we do have full mark examples out there in existence. Um, I just don't have access to them. So, so these examples were provided um, from the lead examiner for the paper, um, just so that we had this evidence to, to be able to share as part of the presentation today. So I don't have access to kind of a huge bulks of learner work. And so I I just don't have any examples to share with you, unfortunately. Um, and I think I suppose the other thing to be aware of is, is sometimes um, those full mark examples can be can sometimes be a bit counterproductive to look at because uh, simply because they're often produced by learners who are working beyond the level of the qualification. Um, and, and so that's perhaps unrealistic in terms of, of of learners being able to kind of aim for that and achieve that for those learners working at the level of the qualification but as I say they do exist out there and certainly as, as we go forward and you'll see the examiner reports will bring up kind of exemplar uh, material in respect of the four different um, assessment grids so that you'll be able to see really good examples in the future. Now, in terms of availability of resets, now external assessments for this qualification are only available for once a year. So because of the task based nature, there is only a summer sitting for any of these external assessments. Um, and first external assessment is obviously in June 2024 with the paper released, as we say, in, in the middle of January next year. Um, now, you must make sure that you enter your learners for that external assessment. The fact that they're registered on the course is not enough. You actually need to enter them for that external assessment when learners are sitting it. Um, so that's done through your exams officer. So just make sure if you know your, sit, your group's going to sit the assessment this year that they are entered um, in preparation for that. Now, again, because of the task based nature of it, the learners will not have a reset opportunity for this component. 
uh, because and that's because of the fact that there's only one a year but it's also because of the terminal assessment rule now the terminal assessment rule that was introduced with these uh, redeveloped tech awards means that learners must take that external synoptic assessment so in effect component three in the year that they're planning to certificate so they can only take it in their second year of their course they can't do it in the first year at all because it won't count towards their final grade so the fact that it has to happen in their second year and the fact that it's task based and it only offered once a year means there is no reset opportunity at all for this um and so you just need to be mindful of that in terms of of preparing learners and setting expectations um, that this is their one chance for this exam and, and they won't have another opportunity. Now, that's true in terms of all of the creative subjects because of the task based nature of them. Um, and it's, it's just like I say, it's part and parcel of, of these these kind of assessments, really. Now, in terms of uh, going forward um, with this and preparing future, that you've got some uh, materials that are available to you and some support uh, process that are available. So you've got the delivery guides uh, for this component and all other components as part of the resources on the Pearson website. You've got the sample assessment material. So that's examples of um, papers one of you know one of the ones is in sort of included in your resource pack but there are uh two uh sample assessment material documents on the website showing you what papers might look like and the kind of themes that learners might be given to respond to and you also at the other end of of your um of the assessment you've also got results plus which allows you to see uh, the breakdown of your learner work, so the breakdown of marking for, for your cohort. So once the uh, um, assessment has been completed, all of the uh, marks are then collated and, and sort of obviously you're sent the results back, but you can access Results Plus to, to kind of get an overview of how your learners have um, sort of responded in terms of how they've achieved across the four different mark grids. Uh, Gerard, you've said tech again. Uh, you're going to have to clarify with me in terms of what what you mean. In terms of tech again, uh, you've also got paid resources that are also available. So there's a Pearson student book, um, active books and books and active uh, learn teacher packs that are available for for centres to buy. They are obviously. They have a, a cost implication to them, but they are available. Um, and if you go onto the website, there's a whole in within the published uh, materials tab, you'll find access for those paid for resources. Uh, you've also got other support, um, obviously, that you can um, access in terms of this specification. You've got uh, the uh, specification itself um, and I don't forget don't worry I haven't forgotten that we're going to come back Fiona to that uh, question you had about the information on on page 41 um, you've also got on the website you've got past training videos including some of those kind of getting started events that were run as a kind of general introduction to the qualification You've got Ask the Expert and you've our um, subject advisor who, who we'll talk about in just a moment is Jacqueline and she's there to support centres and answer any questions that you might have in relation to generally in relation to the qualification, the whole tech award, but also specifically in relation to this uh, component three, because we know obviously it's the new thing that people are having to do. Uh, uh, and so it's something to be aware of. Uh, you say the marking and moderation for internal components video currently isn't there. Do you know when it will be? Um, no, Verity, I don't, but I will. I'm just going to make a note of that. Um, I will chase that with the training team um, because we've definitely delivered that and there should be copies of that recording available. Um, so I will put that query through 
uh, to the training team to ask when that will be uploaded. Oh, I've just made a quick note of that on the pad. Um, So it says here there is a technical and review record referenced in the mark scheme. The mark scheme you've sent in the delicate pack is dated July 2021. Is there an updated version available for the new spec? Yes, there is. If you look at the sum, sorry, good, very good spot, Claire. Um, so in terms of uh, the updated uh, mark grid, if you look at the sample assessment materials on the website for the new tech award, that will be an updated version of the mark scheme and, and that will include the, that kind of updated reference to technical and review records. Um, so as I say, go back to the um, sample assessment material on the website and you'll be able to access the, the most up to date mark scheme and apologies for that. Um, I think there's probably just been a, a slight uh, glitch there in terms of um, maintaining the right sort of version control there so apologies for that um so is there a c2 video or link anywhere needed for moderation um gerard do you mean a, a video of training for c2 um i'm not sure exactly what link you need so again if you can clarify for that um, and then finally, just uh, going through, uh, we've got here, as I say, we've got Results Plus is available and you can find out more. And that's that research results analysis tool that you can use uh, after the exam. You've also got, you're going to have access to past papers, um, as we say, and uh, following the exam this year, you will also have a really useful document, which will be the lead examiner report. Um, and that lead examiner report um, will offer lots of exemplars in terms of the four mark grids and, and showing good, uh, good sort of um, responses against those four mark grids, but also outlining where the common mistakes or where people perhaps have uh, made errors uh, across the board in terms of you know those common errors we see in, in learner submission so Gerard so similar today just to, to go over the main aspects and ensure that it fits what has been delivered um, there is there has been a session that looks at components one and two um, it looks at that generically at those both those internal assess components and that's the one I'm going to ask about getting that put up on the website uh, in terms of the legacy spec examiner report, if you go into the Pearson website and, and log into the legacy spec uh, qualification page, the there is a, a whole section on external assessment and that includes the examiner reports from previous. Uh, the marking grid for component three on the website is, as I say, it's attached at the end of the sample assessment materials. I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do, let's just quickly, um, final slide then, I uh, just want to introduce uh, Jacqueline. Uh, Jacqueline is the subject advisor uh, for creative media. She's relatively new in role, but um, she's very keen to kind of support centres um, and you can access Jacqueline. You've got all her contact details are available on the website. And in addition to that, you can actually book one-to-one -one sessions with Jacqueline, who was able to support. Uh, Claire, thank you for highlighting that. I wasn't aware that we had that that issue. Um, I'll certainly be looking at that and addressing that with the the team at, um, who put the pack together. So. Thank you for acknowledging, uh, for letting us know that, and I'll definitely review that that material. So thank you for that. Um, now, we are at the end of the session. What I am going to do for anyone that's interested, I'm just going to show you where to access um, those mark grids on the on the um, website, just because uh, trying to be sort of show you exactly where that is for those people. Um, 
for those people who um, already know where to get the mark grids and don't need that, then uh, we are at the end of the session. I'd just like to um, say thank you for sticking with me and apologies again for sort of disappearing off halfway through the session. I hope you found it useful. Um, we are just going to quickly launch a quick um, feedback uh, form for you to complete and, and I will ask you to complete that. And as soon as we've done that feedback, um, as I say, I'm quite happy to stick around and just show you exactly where to access the materials on the website. Um, so just before we move off, yep, yeah, thank you, Joanna. Joanna's launched that quiz now. And if I can just ask you to fill out that uh, survey poll um, just so that we can gather that information. And as I say, um, then what I'll do is I'll stick around and just do a quick tour of the website. So whilst you're doing that, I'm going to end the show um, and just bring up a web page. And as I say, for those of you who are uh, going to log off and not stick around to look at the website tour, I'd just like to say all the very best with the delivery of this programme and the delivery of this component. Um, and I realise that anything new can be quite uh, concerning and quite worrying, but um, I'm sure you'll be able to use your experience um, to, to you know, prepare your learners well for this. So thank you very much. Right. OK, so we should now be able to see if we're if if technology hasn't failed me again, we should be able to see a Google uh, web search engine. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into. Uh, oh, I'm going to go into the Pearson website, so qualifications.pearson.com as the web page, and I'm going to go and I'm going to find the BTEC Tech Awards in the Find a Qualification. I'm going to go see and I'm going to go down to creative media production. Here we go. Now, in this one, now you've got the option to either go into the creative media production 2022, which is the current, obviously, the, the program we're talking about, or you've got this creative media production for 14 to 16 learners. That's the legacy course. So for those of you who want to access the legacy uh, lead examiner report, then just click on that and you can go through and you can find the lead examiner report on that page. But for now, we're going to look at the Creative Media Production 2022. Um, first page, we've got the specification. We've also got the contact details for Jacqueline for any further questions you might have. Um, and then we've got the second tab, which is course materials. If I click on that, then you've got your sample assessment materials here on this first tab. So I'm going to open that up and right down the bottom here, I've got sample assessment materials for component three. If I click on that uh, sample assessment material, I'm going to open it up and there we go. We've got uh, the creative media production component three sample assessment material. And as I scroll down all the way through there, got the paper so that's the sample but then at the bottom of that I've got the mark grid so you can see that it's part of that sample assessment material I've got the mark grid at the end does that help in terms of um, accessing the the mark grid that you're asking about and is there anything else anyone would like to go through OK. Now, Fiona, the other thing I just wanted to go through, and I know I, I promised to stick around and, and kind of go back to for you, is it, you said there was an issue on page 41 of the spec, I think you, you mentioned. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, download the specification. 53. OK. Helps if I know exactly where I'm going. So let's have a quick look. Let's go to page 53. Uh, whereabouts on page 50 or 54? OK. Uh, 
so the external assessment is set and marked by Pearson. You'll need to ensure the learners are aware that they need to work independently and the requirements of any external assessment. We define the degree of control for assessment for BTEC qualifications in this specification of medium control. This is the completion of assessments usually over a long period of time, which may include a period of supervised conditions. Uh, the supervised conditions may allow learners to access resources, prepared notes or the internet to help them complete the task. Further information on responsibilities for conducting internal assessment, external assessments is given in the document instructions. So I, I understand what you mean in terms of, of that potentially perhaps being slightly mixed messages um, there. Uh, but I think what they're trying to refer to is that that median control applies if we look at the assessment as a whole. So we've got these periods of very controlled assessment, which are these two periods where we're doing activity one and activity two. But that there's obviously much looser controls in terms of that medium control is during the periods of research at the beginning and that period of when they're sort of preparing and they're creating assets. So we just need to be def sort of quite, quite clear in terms of the different definitions. So controlled assessment in terms of those two five hour periods, very much about there's no access to the internet. They're not allowed to kind of do anything, sort of access any other materials, but for the rest of the time, it's much looser control. Does that make sense? I, I I completely like I say I understand what you're saying, um. And and I I understand what you're saying about Unit Eight and that that is a very different assessment and I am aware of, uh, that Unit Eight does allow that. Um, but for this one, obviously, because learners are generating that evidence, they just need to go in without their kind of notes as such and without access to the internet and and that's very clear what it does say that in the paper itself. Okay, it's now uh, sort of getting on for sort of 10 past seven. I'm just going to stop sharing uh, the screen now. If there is anything else, um, any other questions, and I'm quite happy uh, to help if anybody has any sort of final questions. Uh, but yeah, if there's anything else, let's just see. Uh, just for clarification, students are not allowed any resources. Uh, just for uh, resources, for example, no code examples or classwork example in the controlled assessment sections so no absolutely that's exactly the correct during, during those controlled assessments is very much exam conditions obviously uh, during the initial research period and during the preparation period uh, they can access class records they can access the internet they can they're very much you know sort of free to work quite uh, fluidly uh, Unfortunately, I am being told now we're just at the end of the the scheduled time um, for today's session. So unfortunately, we are going to have to end. If you do have any outstanding questions and apologies that, that we haven't got through those. But as I say, contact Jacqueline as the subject advisor and she is there to help you and she will uh, support you throughout.